Hey, what's up y'all, it's Jeremy from Nam Life, and today I'm gonna show you how to make one of my favorite all-time dishes, oxtail soup, canto style. Let's go. So oxtail soup is something that my grandma used to make for big family gatherings every so often, but I actually learned the recipe from my dad. So whenever I'm feeling a little bit homesick or wanna you know, be reminded of my family, I'll whip this up uh, probably about once a month. It's something that you can keep and it lasts for a while, makes a ton of servings and everyone's bound to like it. So until recently, oxtail was a bit of a throwaway meat just because people um, didn't really know what to do with it. But recently it's become a lot more popular. So the pricing has gone up, but as you can see here, there's a ton of meat, ton of fat, ton of flavor that's contained within this meat, which is why I love it because the texture is just so different from any other part of the cow that you're gonna eat. Boiled in soup over the course of a few hours, it just falls right off the bone. The fat distributes right into the broth and it just gives it a super rich umami flavor. The cool thing about this dish is, while it seems like it's a lot of work, it's actually not. It's really simple. As long as you have the right fresh ingredients, it's just a matter of getting the timing right of when you add them into the stew so that everything gets the right texture, nothing's too soft, you still get a bit of crunch with some of the vegetables. So I'm gonna walk through the ingredients today and then I'm gonna show you how to put it together into the finished product. So of course you're gonna want your oxtail. Um, there's a bunch of different ways that they're prepped. So sometimes you can get them frozen where they're uh, cut a lot thinner. I prefer to get the fresh thick ones because then you really get a nice bite when you chew into the meat. In addition, you'll want some bones, just a few. So uh, usually a femur or a neck bone is the right way to go. It's gonna release a lot of marrow and flavor into the broth. Next, you're gonna want your aromatics, which is garlic, ginger, scallion. Can't do a canto dish without those. All right, so for the first round of vegetables, you're gonna want carrots and celery. So these go into the soup first, and as you boil them, they soften up a bit, but still offer a nice crunch texture when you chew into it. And then for the second round of vegetables, you're gonna want tomatoes, which adds a nice bright flavor to it. And then you want potatoes, which makes it a lot more heartier. It's almost like a meal in itself. All right, and then finally, to finish everything off, you're gonna want a little bit of sesame oil, white pepper powder, salt, and then fish sauce if you got it. So before we get started preparing all of the vegetables, you're going to take the biggest pot that you own, fill it about a third of the way with water, and put it over high heat. Get that boiling so that we can start the broth. All right, so first step to getting your broth going, you're gonna to wanna to drop your bones and your oxtails into the boiling pot. All right, so you're gonna make sure that your oxtails and bones are fully submerged in the boiling water. Just give that a quick stir. And then next, you're gonna to wanna to let it sit for about 15 minutes. All right, so while that's happening, let's prep some vegetables. Starting with the garlic, um, you can never have too much, so I'm gonna probably go with a clove and a half of it. And with that, what you wanna do is just mince it up real nice. And with the ginger, you don't have to chop it too fine. You can just cut it into like inch long slices. All right, so up next you got your scallion. And what you're gonna wanna do is trim off the edge like this because these you can just put in a cup of water and give it some sunlight and they'll actually regrow. Unlimited scallions, pro tip. These are easy too. All you have to do is cut them into inch long slices like this. Just make sure you get enough surface area so that when they're in the broth, they're giving out a good amount of flavor. All right, so with the onion, what you're gonna wanna do is cut it in half and save the other half for later. That's gonna go in around the same time as the tomatoes and potatoes. Let's do a quick and dirty chop of this. All right, there you go. So the first phase of vegetables that you want to put in are the carrots and celery. They take a little bit longer to soften up, so you want to toss those in first so they reach the right texture. So you're going to want to cut them into about an inch long pieces. The thicker ends, you can cut them in half too because you want them to be crunchy and uh, you know still be a little bit of crispy texture in there, but you don't want them to be too hard. All right, so with celery, you're gonna want about two thirds of a package full of it. And same thing with this, you just wanna cut it into about inch long pieces so that it can tenderize a bit in the soup, but not so much that it's soft. You still want a little bit of crunch in there. So first round of vegetables, here we go. All right, so for the next round of vegetables, you're gonna want about three medium tomatoes, gives it a nice citrusy fresh flavor to the soup, and then about two potatoes, which makes it really hearty. And then you're gonna have the other half of the onion that you saved from earlier. 
So with the potatoes, you're gonna cut them into about inch long pieces. And you don't want them to be too big because then they are still too hard and crunchy, but you don't want them to be too small either because they disintegrate into the soup while it's boiling and gives it a really grainy mouthfeel that is unpleasant. All right, so with the tomatoes, you're gonna to wanna to cut them into quarters first. And what I like to do is squeeze out the, the seeds and the juice from the middle because that goes into the broth and really changes the flavor and texture as well. And then from here, just cut out this little top part. Half, half, half. All right, and with this onion, this half that we saved from earlier, it goes in with the second round of vegetables so that it still retains like a nice crunchy texture. So with this half, you're just gonna cut it into slices. So after 15 minutes of boiling, you'll see that the scum is starting to develop on the surface. What you wanna do is grab a bowl and a spoon and just slowly guide that scum into here. Put it in this bowl for later. Do it like a shot if you want, just playing. Get all that scum out and just pour it down the drain. All right, so now you got the meat boiling, everything's starting to brown a little bit. You scoop the scum and toss that. Next, you wanna drop in your aromatics. All right, so now you got your aromatics in, your kitchen should be smelling amazing. So like I said, this is a super easy dish. You got those in, set your timer for 90 minutes and you can pretty much just walk away, go do whatever. Um, just make sure to check every 15 minutes or so for the water levels. If it starts to get a little low, so you can see the meat kind of protruding from the surface of water, just add a bit more water in. So it's been about 90 minutes, you've kept the water levels high, your kitchen's smelling amazing. Now it's time to drop the first phase of vegetables in, which is carrots and celery. All right, so it's been about another 45 minutes. The aroma in your kitchen should have an extra sweetness from the celery and carrots by now. Moving on to the next step, we're gonna drop in phase two of vegetables, which is the tomato, potato, and onion. All right, so now the soup is almost ready. On to the final step. White pepper powder, fish sauce, and a bit of salt. All right, so after about 30 minutes, phase two of your vegetables should be pretty much done cooking by now. So you'll wanna come back and the way to check is to take a look at the potato. So you want it to be soft enough that you can cut a spoon through it, but not so soft that it's melting and mashing up into the broth. So about 30 minutes. All right, so just give it a good stir. Get everything all mixed up in there. Should be super fragrant and aromatic. Mmm, always reminds me of growing up at home. So after about three hours of cooking, this oxtail is gonna be super tender. It's basically just gonna fall right off the bone and the fat is gonna be really rendered, so it's delicious. So I always like to try that first, put it in a bowl, and something my mom actually taught me how to do is just get a little bit of soy sauce, and I like to take the meat off and dip it right in here and eat it. To add a little bit more salt, white pepper, uh, fish sauce, or sesame oil, but really try not to overdo it because you want the star to be the flavors of the meat and vegetables combining together. And the nice part is you put this in the fridge and as it chills, it's gonna gain more and more flavor as the bones release more marrow and fat. Damn, mmm. The meat is so tender while still staying juicy. I think because of, you know, just cooking in the broth and absorbing all of that delicious liquid. <laughs> mm. So, the broth is really rich and flavorful from just the collection of vegetables and meat and everything releasing all the flavor over the cooking time and everything's still kind of retaining its body. So with the tomato, it's really citrusy and fresh and then the rest of the vegetables still have a really nice mouthfeel to it. With the meat and vegetables and especially the potato in there, it's almost like a whole meal in itself. You can have a bowl of this and be full for a good amount of time and it's really healthy and nutritious too.
There you have it, oxtail soup, a little something from my family. So next time you're having a big gathering and you're looking for something that will feed everybody without having to do too much work, this is the dish for you. And as always, if you wanna see more recipes, like, comment, and subscribe. See you later.